Hey guys, you may have heard the urban legend that if you drop a penny off the Empire State Building, then it will kill somebody as it comes down. Now we know that this is false and doesn't actually happen. What would happen if you dropped a fidget spinner off the Empire State Building? Well, to be honest, I have absolutely no clue. So let's go home and try to figure this out. When you drop something, it accelerates, meaning that there is a change in speed as it falls. This is because of Newton's first law, which states an object at rest tends to stay at rest, while an object in motion tends to stay in motion, unless acted on by an external force. And in our case, when you drop something, gravity is that external force. The force of gravity is constantly pulling down on whatever you drop, causing it to go faster and faster. However, there is one thing we have not considered, drag. Drag, also known as air resistance, is a type of friction. Now we don't really think of air as having much mass, but air is made of molecules, and when things fly through the air, they hit those molecules and they slow down slightly. Because of drag, objects don't just accelerate forever. There comes a point where the upward force of drag is equal to the downward force of gravity, so they cancel each other out and it stops accelerating. This maximum velocity is also known as its terminal velocity. The equation for terminal velocity is Vt equals the square root of 2ma divided by Cdap. Now I know that's quite a mouthful, so let's try to break it down. What it means is terminal velocity equals the square root of 2 times the mass times acceleration. This is then divided by the drag coefficient times the area of the object and the density of the fluid. This means terminal velocity is proportional to the square root of acceleration divided by drag. So now let's start filling in some of these variables. Now we can measure the mass of the spinner as 61 grams. And we know that gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second. Now the density of air can change a bit, but at sea level and 15 degrees Celsius, it's 1.225 kilograms per meter squared. Now since the spinner is pretty much just four circles, we can find the area of them and add them up, which gives us an area of about 25 square centimeters. Now lastly, we need to find the drag coefficient, which is a number that quantifies the amount of air resistance that an object has. So something that is very streamlined, like an airplane wing, will have a smaller drag coefficient than a cube. Unfortunately, it's quite tricky to calculate, and traditionally you would need a wind tunnel to figure it out. But using a 3D modeling software like SolidWorks, we can test it out in a virtual wind tunnel. So from our simulation, we see that a fidget spinner has a drag coefficient of 1.44 when put vertically just like this. So now that we have all of our numbers, we can convert them all into kilograms and meters and solve. So we get our final terminal velocity number as 16.46 meters per second or 37 miles per hour. Now this is really fast, especially for a fidget spinner, but would it kill you? Well, I don't really know, but I do know a way that we can find out, though it might be a bit messy. So let's go outside. Now using this air cannon and this rocket that I made from paper and electrical tape, we can actually determine the terminal velocity of the fidget spinner. So previously I used a slow motion camera and a tape measure to find out that I need to charge this thing to 70 PSI to get it at the terminal velocity. So that being said, let's see what it does to some unsuspecting watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Now, as I suspected, the spinner didn't really do a whole lot of damage to the watermelon. Now, most likely, when it would fall down, it would sort of glide down on its side. But what if it fell down vertically? Well, if we plug those numbers into SOLIDWORKS, we see that it have a drag coefficient of only 0.33, and its surface area would only be 5 square centimeters. So if we plug those two numbers back into our original equation, we get a terminal velocity of 77 meters per second, or 173 miles an hour if it fell down vertically the entire time. Now I'm not sure my air cannon can go that fast, but uh, let's see. Three, two, one. So that didn't work quite as well as I had hoped, but I got one other little thing that we can try. Ready? Three, two, one. I saw some red. Now these tests weren't perfect and didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped, 
but I still hope that you got the idea and learned a lot about terminal velocity. So most likely a falling fidget spinner off the Empire State Building wouldn't kill you, but there's definitely a possibility that it could if it fell straight down at 173 miles an hour. As when I shot this, it was going nowhere near 173 miles an hour. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy watching this video, which is I enjoy creating this video, please leave a like or subscribe. Also, thanks to my friends Ethan, oh sorry, and Brock for helping me make this video. Thanks.